gotta go, I'm get angry at all of my honesty. You know I try, but I don't oh, I love so here we go. I already went ahead and made this unit. This is by Chalk Hair, and this is their Virgin Brazilian Deep Curly Hair. And they did send me bundle lengths of 18, 16, 14, and a 14 inch um, 360 frontal. So, what I'm going to do right now, as you guys see, I am sectioning the hair off because I do plan on just thinning the hairline out some because it is rather thick like I said this is the deep curly hair so I'm just gonna get one of my really good tweezers and just tweeze away um, as you guys see right here I was sitting in my living room and just just sitting here and enjoying the TV show but I do use a wig block mannequin head to tweeze all my units versus using it on like my plastic mannequin heads that I like to style them on but you guys First of all, this is not the first time for me tweezing any hair or any hairline. Um, this is not the hairline. This is like in the middle. So I was kind of like going in sections of it. But um, I do suggest that you need like a really good pair of tweezers to do that. Because if you're getting tweezers like from like a Dollar Tree or something, then it's definitely kind of makes it a little bit more time consuming and harder. So I do suggest getting a really good pair of tweezers. And if you've seen somebody little crawling by, that was my two-year-old grandson who will soon be three next month in January. So yeah, he was playing with one of his cars. So as I was saying, I do think it's like really important to use like a really good pair of tweezers. I have used certain types of tweezers before um, and it also depends on the shape of the tweezer heads also so I also would say take that into like consideration when you are choosing the right tools to use for your hair so I did brush some of it out or I did brush it out so as I go along I do brush the hair out and I do get a nice amount of hair onto the brush that just allows me to know that I did do a, um, my tweezing now it's on to dyeing the hair you guys know I love to use box hair dye so I am going to use this dark and lovely 396 and I'm only going to be needing two of them I do love the color effect that this gives you and it just really does a really good job also it doesn't leave the hair so brassy to where you know what I mean you have to worry about toning it and also it doesn't fry the hair as bleach would do in developer so I think like for me the easiest method is using a box dye I do use dark and lovely a lot sometimes I will switch off to cream of nature but for that particular product I do have to travel a little further so as you guys see I did go ahead and put the unit onto my plastic mannequin head which I love these I have a nice collection of them they are great for styling wigs and I'm just going to um, pin the hair up and start from underneath of you know dyeing the hair now um, I do use the T pens to hold the hair and in place and now it's time to brush the hair on or the, the um, dye on I'm do apologize so the most important part for this method because I do want it to look like a certain color like um, one of the other wigs I created I do saturate the bottom portion of the hair and work my way up and just go lighter so that way the bottom is so much like it's just a lot brighter so it's just like you know doing the same thing of ombre in here but this time I'm using the box dye so once I get up further with the hair I just go lightly and I kind of like take my brush downwards as you guys can see and I kind of like brush it on the tips of the bristle so that way it's barely touching the hair as you guys see right here I'm just kind of like raking it but I'm using the brush to do that. So as you guys see, once again, I'm saturating the bottom portion of the hair with like a lot of the hair dye and two boxes is more than enough. If you don't feel it is, you can always get three. They're super cheap at Walmart or any you know beauty supply store for the dark and lovely and cream of nature brand. So I am saturating the bottom portion and I just go very lightly once I move up. And this is like the middle portion right here, or more or less, yep. The middle portion right here is where I would just go a little bit lighter, but I'm still going to saturate the bottom with some of the remainder dye from the middle. And as you guys see, I kind of went a little bit lightly. I'm not soaking the dye into the top portion, but I am going to take the actual brush and kind of like rake the hair rake the hair so when I say rake the hair you know like when you have like a regular rake tool a garden tool you just go ahead and you take the tips of the rake and you just brush the ground with it that is what I used the um, dye brush to do as well I kind of like stand the brush upright like so and I just smooth down just like as you guys see right here I am raking the hair dye into it so that way it's not saturating into the hair but it's more or less kind of like only 
onto the first or the top surface. So I went ahead and moved on to the next section. This does take a lot of time. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. It's not something that you know you're gonna do in like 30 minutes because you do have to do section by section. So it is tedious. I'm definitely not going to show you guys all of this on camera because it's just repetitive. You know, I'm doing the same thing throughout the entire hair, even including the closure. Excuse me, not the closure, but the 360. And if it was a closure, it would be the same process. So all of the process is identical. And I do leave this on the hair for like two hours because it is box dye. So it's not as harsh as actual bleach um, or uh, developer. All right, guys. So first of all, now y'all see me dye the hair. And I don't remember if I showed y'all on camera tweezing or whatever, but you know, we'll see as I edit this video. But let me tell you something for this 360 by Chaco hair. So I got to tweezing the hairline of it. And did a girl really like go overboard? Like, I like really tweeze the heck out of this hairline. Not, not even in the front, but I don't know what happened like mid right here. I think, I know I was watching The Walking Dead and I, I don't know what happened. Like, first of all, the color came out pretty. It came out really nice. It kind of reminds me of the wig that I made. Um, I can't even remember what hair company it was. So... It came out really pretty, nice 360. I used the elastic that was from the dome cap. Like I have never done this ever in my life. But did I tweeze so much that I tweeze like a bald spot in it? I don't know what happened. Like seriously, like I don't know what I did. And I'm so upset because I had like, oh, had good intentions for this wig like so as you guys see that big kind of like part on the side right here that is actually not supposed to be a part that is the bald patches that i went ahead and tweezed into this unit unfortunately even so it's time to fix this unit now all right you guys so i first had the wig just as a regular wig with no bang and as you guys see now she does have a bang and that is just because of the tweezing that i did to it i ended up putting a bald spot in this unit and um it was kind of like all the way across kind of like right here is where it started and so it was no way for me to kind of like cover that up with like a part it's not a part this is actually me tweezing the heck out of this unit. When I tried it on last night, I did have to cut it into like a very shaggy bang, but I also had to cut the back and I hope it came out good because I can't really cut curly hair as well as I can like straight hair or whatever. Let's give this a try. Okay guys, so it is time to try and style this wig. Um, first of all, this has been a lot of work for me. We're dealing with the blinding um, ball spot in it, which was not even a spot. It was kind of like throughout, not throughout the unit, but across, and there was no way to work around it. So, you know, it, I just decided to make it into a wig like this. The color does look really nice on this particular unit, but um, I do want to kind of like tame it and make it a little bit shorter, which I will go off camera and cut it because um, there was so much hair. I did try to cut some of it on camera, but kind of got like a little bit distracted. I'm not even distracted, but I just don't like all the hair all over me. So I, I decided to just go off camera and kind of like cut it. Plus I had to go in the bathroom and see the back. So this is how it ended up looking after I took the scissors to it. Now it does still need to be like, you know, fixed a little bit more like in certain areas like you will see like little tiny strands hanging like in the front right there. So I did definitely fix that up after I did this video um, because I was able to see it more. But um, I do like the way it came out, even though this wasn't expected. But for me, I really do need the hair to be very full and just curly, especially if it's going to be short. I need it to be over full, like huge, huge, huge. So once you fluff it up and stuff, it looks totally better. Like, so it looks cute like this. But once I really fluffed it up, then it looked like something that like I really, really would wear. Like if it's short and curly, girl, I need it to be um, like really, 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 really big. Like not Afrocentric big, but just about. Yeah, 
All right, you guys, so this is the finished look. The hair was not that long to begin with, but I will tell you guys this. I took it through hell and back, okay? And I finally made it like into something that was acceptable to me. Despite the ball patch, this was a 360, and now it's just like a full wig, okay? It's still a 360, but I'll never wear it out like that because I just cut it up. I've chopped it up. I do need to get to the back a little bit, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to have my daughter um, wear it for me so that way I could cut it better in the back because I can't see. But for the most part, I do like the way the color came out. It's really pretty hair. I do like it kind of frizzy and full, so you guys see me kind of like really mess with it and bring it up and heighten it up. And I just kind of like angled it. I had to go off camera and just kind of fix the back. But now I need to clean up this mess of hair and also off of me. But you can definitely check out Chaco hair. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not really sure, but I will leave all of their information below. It is very nice quality hair. It did hold up. You know, I got a little bit of tweeze happy, but you know, I wasn't really expecting to make something like this. This is not what I was going for, but you know, hey, it did come out cute. I have another unit like this, um, and it's just dark color, and I love it. So I just figured once I seen the ball spot, I would just make it into that unit, but in a lighter color because I do like this color a lot. It's very pretty. Um, and I think box dye does, like, wonders for hair, like, seriously, wonders for hair. And, you know, something. some days I'm, I'm in the mood for curly big hair like this, and some days I'm not. So it all depends really on the mood that I'm actually really in to wear this kind of hair. But, you know, it won't be something that I will wear every day because, like I said, I have to definitely be in the mood. But, um... I do like it a lot. I do like the color and the way it came out. Unfortunately for me, Tweets Happy was not the kicker. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too long and all over the place. I love you guys. Stay diva and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, thumbs this video up, and I will see you guys in a soon-to-come video. And happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and yeah, I love you guys, and see you soon. Let me on, let me redeem